So when and how did you reconnect? Well, I received a letter. I received a letter from JJ. I sometimes I just forget the year. He uh, sent it to me on February seventh, two thousand five, and he was that was in okay February. He was going to be getting married in July, and he contacted me wanting to know if I would be interested in getting together and he said you know know that I've had a good life and um, I emailed him that same day and then he waited a day to email me back because he he thought when he sent it out it would be months and months and months before he got a response so um, two days passed and then he came back to me by email and we set a phone call time and then we talked and we ended up talking about 90 minutes we found out we were both very verbal and then um, five weeks later, I was, uh, I was in San Francisco with him and his fiance, and I was going to stay in a hotel, and instead I ended up staying two nights and three days in their 900-square-foot studio apartment. So when I tell you we were really together, <laughs> we were really together. Um, was that your first contact with him since he was born? Yes, I saw him for three minutes when he was born. Yeah, and he was, uh, when he contacted me, he was a month away from his 27th birthday. What happened after um, JJ and I met, it went extremely well. And we, I don't know, the two of us, after we talked on the phone, spoke on the phone, it was just simple. And we just knew we wanted to see each other and we could speak with each other so, just so easily. It's like we'd known each other all our lives. And I know we had, but we hadn't seen each other. And um, so because it went well, he, he wanted to know if he should, you know, should I connect with my dad? And, you know, well, that's your choice. So he and, met you first and then he found Yeah, him. and then about a month later he met with Chris. Yeah, and that went very well for them, too. So can you talk about the events leading to JJ's birth and his adoption? Sure. Um, so m my parents were Catholic and they converted our family to Catholicism when I was 16 years old. We went to this all-girl Catholic school and we weren't Catholic. And so um, they converted everyone. And the reason I mention that is because the Catholic Church got involved with this. I had a Catholic lawyer. I had, there were just all kinds of people who got involved um, that made it a very, very ugly. The events leading up to it were very, very ugly. And um, let's see. There was a lot of guilt, made you feel like. Yeah, yeah. It was like I was, um, I was a non entity actually. Once the Catholic Church's lawyer got involved, um, I was just a vessel growing this child. There were people who wanted to adopt him and uh, really had no say in anything. And Chris, Chris and I were very, very much in love. He had asked me to marry him. I mean, exchanged rings, everything. And let's see, I think that's when I was about, I don't know, three or four months pregnant. Unfortunately, he was down in um, California going to school. I was living in Portland at my parents' house. And so there's... And how old were you and how old was he? Uh, he was, um, let's see, it's an October birthday, so he was 17 and I was 18. Yeah. And you wanted to get married, but... Yes. The adults? It, it, wasn't, um, it wasn't his parents. They would have been fine. Um, it was my family. It was my parents. And um, just... For a while, my, my parents went insane. You know, and I can see that. You know, you look back as an adult, it's like... Uh, it, it was out of their control, so they had to get as much control as they could. And they're very, very conservative people, so it's like, how would this look to the neighbors? How does this look to the relatives? In fact, when my mom's relatives came to see us and stay with us, I would be sent to my mother's best friend, and I would stay there. Because yeah. they didn't want you to be seen pregnant? Right. And my mother's sisters did not know about it, but my father's sisters did. We went and stayed with them at Thanksgiving. Yeah, so it's just, just the different different ways and you know this was back in pe people don't think the 70s were that long ago but this was 77 and into 78 and I was going to a small private Catholic college at the time once they found out I was pregnant um, I didn't show till I was five months along I was told I could not stay at the school what, what school was, it? was it University of Portland and we don't think it was that long ago and we think people might have been a little more open in the 70s but no so not about this yeah, I was, um, JJ was born in March. I started college in August. I'd gotten pregnant in June. So this is like your first year of college? Yeah, it was my first year of college, and I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell anybody for months that I was pregnant. So you went to an all-girls school. Was that high school? That was high school, and yeah. that's where you met him? Yes, that's and where I met him. College yeah. We were two people who were very, very much in love. He was conceived in love. There was no thought of us ever having an abortion. Wanted him. He, for some reason, I always knew that, um, 
he just needed to be here. He needed to be born, and I didn't know that I'd ever see him again. But, you know, we told our own, we told our kids, his now brothers and sisters, we told them about J.J. when they were 10, 11, and 14. And, you know, they said, well, if you don't want to talk about it, that's fine. But they were just lovely. lovely. I mean, they were so lovely and loving and wonderful, and they were thrilled to meet J.J. Yeah, but you were 18 yeah. years old. Exactly. You got it, uh, but these were the rules. And at the time, also, I mean, I look back and I can, I can see. Even at the time, I got it. They were a, they had no state funding. They were a Catholic university, and since that time, they have state funding now. It's not strictly a Catholic university. I mean, they still have um, the head, the president will always be a Catholic priest at this point, but. At the time, there there were pretty strict rules. It's not that I knew them going in. I wouldn't say that. I mean, it was a groovy time. It was seven days. I, I, I was very surprised, actually. I was truly, truly surprised. So I just took one class, so I just stayed in the habit of being in school. And then um, after J.J. was born, there was no discussion in my family. There was no grief counseling. There was nothing. I immediately went back into life. And I went back to University of Portland, and I made it through the end of my junior year. And then I went back. So I went to, to University of Portland 77 through 80, and then I went back 87 through 90, and I graduated and got my degree. So by the time you went back to U of P, you had gotten married and had other children? I'd gotten married. I'd had um, three children, and I'd also gotten divorced, too. Yeah. yeah. I went through that whole thing and then found the love of my life, who I'm still with 20 years later, and it's still the love of my life, and it's still the best relationship, you know, ever. But also very, very good friends. One of my very best friends is my ex-husband, and we co-parented our kids. The only haunting part and terrible part was having given JJ up for adoption. I pretty much for, for about 15 years, I lost all of March. I was in, because he was born on March 30th, and I was just in a terrible depression through all of March. I would usually just need to be completely alone you know, on the 30th, and I was very fortunate with my, my husband, Doyle. He just honored whatever that I needed to do. Um, pretty quickly, I'd say in the first year after J.J. was born, I was able to come to, Chris and I did exactly what any kids of those age, with all these parents involved and the church involved and these lawyers involved who, who didn't want us to keep J.J., for, um, we had smart parents. We were both very smart people. All that they could see is that we would lose our opportunity for education, these type of things. So um, I've always known that Chris and I were two people who absolutely were in love with each other. So I know nothing haunting about that except the teeny bit, oh, I should have gone out and said hi. I should have done something. But all of the shouldas make no difference. And, um, yeah. And, um, and then you fell into the problem with anorexia. Like mm -hmm. Well, I, the the first there there were some things that um, just happened uh, from young age, from about sixth grade to uh, sixth grade, eighth grade, and I'm not going to talk about those because those are really family things that don't need to be shared. Okay, but there were some things that occurred around my body and my body image issue, and that um, I shouldn't start to look like a woman. Okay, and. Uh, and I didn't realize until about 10 years after I was really into it that it really, it really was. I was so guilty about having given a kid up for adoption. So guilty. And that made me not, not worthy of sustenance, not worthy of food. But I didn't know any of that what was going on. I just knew that when I looked in the mirror, I saw a 300-pound person, even though I was 80 pounds. And it's like when I was pregnant with my middle child, I gained 18 pounds and lost 22 when she was born. You know. During that time when you're going through the therapy to get over that, was mm -hmm. your family supportive? Do you have one sister? No, I have a, my older sister is very anorexic and still is, um, although although she doesn't really think so. And then my, my younger sister would do sort of the opposite, and if she would get upset, she would put on 40 pounds, 80 pounds, just like that. So we do have eating disorders in our family. and. Um, and certainly my mother had one so focused on food and my grandmother so focused on food and not gaining a pound and, and all of these things. So I think that has to do with kind of repressing things? From well, my, my mom's father died when she was seven and she had a little sister who was five and she had to take her on the trolley. You know, actually, I think her little sister was four. Um, um, 
take her on the trolley, take her to all her doctor's appointments and everything. This young, young, young person having to do this. So I, I think there's a lot of familial things that are in there, let alone having get, given a child up for adoption. So, no, my parents never came to family night. I mentioned it one time to them. Um, we're not very open. I mean, it's in the line of we, and but we all get along. We We do our family things together, and we have get together for the holidays and um, very pleasant with each other and we, we we just don't talk about things that really matter. That's probably a better way to say it. Oh, and I know one other thing I want to be sure that I tell you about is um, my tattoo. The second time that I went to see JJ, I'll show it so you can see, sorry. The second time that I went down to see JJ, he sent me an email before I went to see him and he said that he had designed tattoos for us because this was so significant when it happened that he wanted to honor it in ritual and blood. And so his says moms. It's exactly the same, but it says moms.